Okay, welcome back to uh, part three, where we're going to have a look at pen portraits. Okay, you've probably never heard of one of these before. Um, and a pen portrait is a, a piece of work, creative piece of work that you use to promote yourself effectively. Okay, and so that's what we're going to be looking at here. So let's have a look at the, these two different um, pieces of work. Okay, so we're going to be using the pen portrait to assess part of personal effectiveness because it brings in your skills and your use of audits and analysis of audits, which you've done. It is a creative and innovative way of selling yourself. So we'll be looking at that. And it's another good way of bringing in digital literacy skills because you're going to be creating it on a computer. So let's have a look at differences here between a pen portrait and a CV. If you look at these examples, there is um, some significant differences. Start with there's a photo in this. There is a more creative appearance to it. This is a very standard appearance. You will be making a CV and there's nothing wrong with that but it's just a, a way of putting across your education, training, work history, etc. This here is a little bit more personal. It's a little bit more modern. Um, and if you notice, it always talks in the third person. Okay. So you can see here that this is a uh, pen portrait for Megan. In her seven-year career, Megan has partnered with legendary design firms. She has also done... So Megan's written it, but she's written it in the third person, and that's something you'll need to do as well. So here's the differences. Pen portrait, modern, allows for creativity. We'll be looking for give allocating marks to the creativity section of this, um, when we look at your pen portrait can be interactive there are some online sites we'll come on to that in a second short can only be roughly one side of a4 and that's it it's oops sorry it's a brief overview of yourself skills and qualities focus that's why you've done the two skills audits the enterprise catalyst should, catalyst should have pulled all this information out for you and you're just now putting it into a creative modern pen portrait allows you to sell yourself it's not as formal as a cv it it says should but i'm going to say must be written in third person and it must include a picture of yourself some daft year current year 13s last year were putting cartoons and things in there they want this to be sensible they want this to be real they want it to be as if you would use it in the real world when you leave school okay having a picture of a cartoon as your profile picture isn't very professional so for your enterprise employability challenge you are required to complete a pen portrait which will highlight your skills competencies and attributes we'll discuss what those mean in a second you will have completed two skills audits which will identify these elements enterprise catalyst and the excel one described in the previous lesson uh, two that we've given to you doesn't mean you can't find others if you so wish um, again in Welsh back we'd like you to use a little bit of your own initiative definitely use this one because of that PDF that it brings out it'll give you so much information on these here okay and so will this Excel one these skills audits do not get sent off with the work it's just the pen portrait so the difference between a skill, a competency, and an attribute. Your reflection presentation will use questions based around these that you develop. So the definition of a skill is something that is acquired or developed through training or experience. Okay, the skill of, I don't know, playing the piano, playing the guitar, um, playing golf, or parts within that, for example. Something that you can acquire and do. Competency is the ability then to do something successfully or efficient, efficiently. And an attribute is more about your personality, really. It's a quality or feature regarded as a characteristic or inherent part of someone. Okay? So skills, competencies, and attribute. You'll find your skills audits have pulled these this information out. And there's a lot more stuff on the internet based on what 
constitute skills, competencies, and attributes. So if you are a little bit stuck, go and ask Google, and Google should have plenty of answers for you. So how we're going to write a pen portrait? Compile a list of words or phrases which best describe you from the skills audits and just make them up. So for example, you could have things like the skills audits that said you were approachable, caring, creative, diplomatic, experienced, flexible, helpful, influential, motivated, organized, professional, or at least some of you would be. Um, remember, whatever words you use, you must be able to provide example of your competencies. So effective listener, good at motivating others, good at speaking in public, innovative thinker, Okay, that's taking some of these skills and turning them into competencies. A pen portrait should be written in the third person, must be written in the third person. If written in the first, it appears that you're simply giving your own opinion of yourself. So pen portraits that, that businesses use now to sift through um, potential candidates for jobs, they would expect them to be written in the third person. How you present it, here we go, use your creativity and innovation. The content is personal effectiveness marks, the skills. So how you present it now is the creativity and innovation marks along with digital literacy. Um, various ways, you can do some research online, you can find examples of them, but I'll, I'll give you some in a second. Most start with a short personal profile, personal qualities you offer, references to your skill sets, and then any expertise and experience you might have had with a personal photo as well. So we can have a look at um, oops, some of these here. Sorry, I just closed my presentation down. Have a look at some of these here. Okay, so you can see that there's some creativity gone into these, okay, using ICT. You know, you've got a pho this photograph here, the background's been cut out. Do you know how to cut the photo out of a background? The background of a photo, sorry. It's pretty easy in some of the software we've got now. If you didn't know, how could you find out? How would you improve that skill? That's what we're looking for you to be able to do. Okay, there'll be a video somewhere, just like you're watching this video now. Somebody will have done that video. Turning photos, circling them here. Like, so that's what these have done on here. You've got somebody who's obviously good at graphics. They've got a nice color scheme and backgrounds here and changes and things. Look at these little sort of skill rating areas here, which is quite nice. This person's done it as well, personal and professional skills should be based on your audits and not just made up. Of course, your experience and ed your education might is not going to be the same as these in brief overview, but this gives you a feel for how you can cr be creative. With these things here, obviously don't put your real phone number on it for this one or perhaps your real address um, for now, but if you were using it when you leave school and you want the pen portrait, you'll have one where you can just change these in, but you can use sort of dummy stuff. Use a real photograph okay not um a cartoon so i hope that gives you some ideas here on what you can do so we've got computer skills education you, you can go through and read read some of these um on your these are some of the best ones that we found online okay fortunately when you do search for pen portrait it generally comes up without to draw it's an art, artistic thing drawing yourself using the mirror so they can be quite tricky to find but I think these three here give you a nice little um, platform for you to build your own and be creative. What software are you going to use? Well, personally, I would use um, Publisher, but you could use Word if you put things into tables. Publisher will allow you to control all these better. What you should do if you use Publisher is to um, save it at the end or export it as a PDF because moderator may not have publisher files okay so most people when they complete things will pdf them which means they can open them anywhere and another thing you should do if you want to gain more digital literacy marks is create yourself a linkedin profile or a professional facebook not a personal so a facebook account that's for your professional life not your personal life okay like this again you can you can get significant marks for using social media appropriately okay and showing evidence of that so basically you'd send your linkedin profile to your uh, um to the moderator and they can click and they can see that and you can upload your pen portrait your cv and other stuff to that as well okay so have a good study of these and that'll help you when designing your own so where are we so over to you
Complete the minimum of two skills audits. Should have done that last lesson. Choose a layout that you'd like to use. Creativity is assessed here. Okay, use those ones before. Do Google image searches. Whenever I, I'm not particularly the most creative, I tend to look at what others have done who are creative and then adapt. Okay, so I innovate based on what they've done. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not cheating and copying. It's using other people's work to inspire your own work. Okay, that's where mood boards come from. Choose the key vocabulary that is going to describe your skills, qualities, and attributes, ensuring you have evidence to support your statement. So the evidence can come out of the information you've done in the skills audits. Remember, you'll be doing presentations and all this stuff at the end. So try and make it as accurate as possible. Ensure that you are writing in the third person and choose an appropriate professional picture of yourself, not SpongeBob, etc. Okay, it's a serious piece of work. Something I've not included in this, I think I might add it to final bullet point now I'm thinking about it is, once completed, upload it to a LinkedIn profile and show evidence of that to gain some more marks in digital literacy for this. So I hope this has helped. And if you ever get stuck, you can come back and watch this video. You've now got three hours, three lessons to complete a pen portrait. When the pen portrait's complete, save it into your system in an appropriate folder and it's going to go with all your other work that you will accumulate for this enterprise challenge this is task one so why not make a folder called task one pen portrait and put all the evidence you need in that folder with appropriate names because there are marks for that remember the very first video you watched when i talked about digital literacy and saving things with appropriate folders and file names so you should call it pen portrait uh, you know it could be your name pen portrait mr meredith's pen portrait don't start calling things doc one or pub one etc well okay well um, what i'll try and do as well for those of you who are a little bit sort of not so good with the it i'll find some uh videos for publisher and pop them online some with some of the more um advanced features for you okay so that brings the end of this. Thank you for watching.